And, and there's a new note out from JP Morgan strategists who caution that Wall Street might be too negative on the idea of a Joe Biden presidency for numerous reasons. Uh, Rick Newman, I know that you have been watching the sort of interplay between politics and stocks very closely. What do you make of this note? Uh, well, JP Morgan's not the only one, but they uh, addressed uh, several issues in this note out today. First of all, Joe Biden favors raising the corporate tax rate. It's currently 21 percent. He would raise it to 28 uh, percent. He al also favors a minimum tax on businesses to uh, get around some of those tax breaks. They all they all claim to get their tax bill down. So in theory, if he wins and um, he can get this legislation passed, corporate taxes would go up. So uh, J.P. Morgan says, yes, that would that would reduce modestly reduce shareholder returns and also possibly corporate spending. But some other things Biden might do would offset that. The biggest thing for markets is trade. Uh, Biden would probably rescind the Trump tariffs on uh, Chinese imports and kind of restart uh, negotiations with China. So get out of the trade war with China. Um, he's not going to um, give China a big hug, but he would do things differently. And that would probably mean more predictability for markets on trade. And that's a big deal. And then a couple other things Biden wants to do, uh, example, raise the minimum wage from the current level of $7.50 gradually up to $15. Yes, that raises um, labor costs for companies, but small companies would probably be exempt from that. And it would um, give more spending power to consumers, which would possibly be a net gain for the economy overall. So I think what um, J.P. Morgan and others are starting to say is, I don't really. Maybe we really don't need to worry about Biden um, being such a bad thing for markets here. He might not. And frankly, we haven't really seen markets reacting much as Joe Biden has taken a big lead in the polls. Rick, I think you made a really good summary of that J.P. Morgan note and those arguments. And I think, you know, when we think about some of the notes that had come out previously that had noted that a Joe Biden victory might be negative for the markets, they really focused more narrowly on the tax policy. So we had Goldman Sachs saying that the Democratic tax changes could lower S&P 500 earnings per share by $20 to 150 from a forecast of 170 in 2021. And if we think about, too, what J.P. Morgan pointed out in their note today, they mentioned that a lot of these plans and even the tax policy had really been introduced before for the COVID-19 pandemic. And that leaves a potential upside surprise for Joe Biden to revise his tax policy, his plans in a way that could be a bit more beneficial for the economy. Obviously, with the virus already hitting corporate earnings, that's something that uh, could actually boost the economy if we, if we do see him reduce that from the plan. 28%, potentially bringing that down closer to what the Trump administration had implemented with this 21% corporate tax rate. So I think that will be something to watch out for in the run-up to the election as well. Let's also remember that Biden, um, to get any legislation passed along these lines, he probably needs for Democrats to flip the Senate, now controlled by Republicans. Uh, there is, let's call it a 50%, 55% chance, based on the way things look now, that Democrats could take control of the Senate, but it would be a very thin uh, majority. In other words, if they lost just a couple of Democratic votes for a tax hike, they wouldn't be able to get it. And you really do have, you, you're right, Emily, look, you can look at Biden's plan on paper that he developed in 2019 before any of this mess that we're in uh, developed. But would he really raise taxes at all, uh, you know, in the immediate aftermath of a deep recession? I think that's um, fairly unlikely. And, you know, by the, if, if, this, if this actually happens, Democrats are going to be thinking to themselves, we want to make sure we don't lose the Senate again in the 2022 midterm election. So let's not do anything that might turn off voters. Rick, I, I realize the past is no indicator of where we're going to go in the future, but taxes were raised in 37 during the Depression, and we saw what happened with the recovery then. But in the post-World War II era, what's the market's history when Democrats have the White House versus Republicans? Isn't it usually better when Democrats have the White House? Thank you for that bit of history from 1937, Adam. I, I'm waiting for you to quote a movie from 1937 because you probably have one. Um, you know, it's interesting. Um, markets do slightly better under Democratic administrations than under Republican administrations. Um, people try to read into that. What does that mean about Democratic versus Republican policies? I, I, personally, I think it's just a quirk. Uh, I don't think uh, that uh, there's anything magical about Democratic policies over the decades 
that um, make them better for the stock market. But if it tells you anything, it can tell you that, um, you know, Democrats don't come in and automatically create a stock market correction. I mean, that wouldn't be a good political move. Uh, and remember, Democrats want to get reelected, too, just like Republicans. The movie would be Lost Horizon. OK, I knew it was there. <laughs> In yeah, the days when we had to walk uphill both ways, Rick. Rick, finally, I want to just switch gears a little bit and ask you about today's Supreme Court ruling about the Electoral College that could have implications for uh, the November election and beyond. Uh, can you explain it to us a little bit because it's a little bit thorny to unpack? Yeah, this this would apply in very in very rare circumstances where uh, a candidate wins the popular vote in a state, but there are a couple of electors who say, we're not gonna vote for the guy or the woman who won the popular vote, we're going to vote for the other candidate. So if it, in a really, really tight election, uh, like the one we had in 2000, you, the, a small number of these electors could actually uh, affect the outcome. So uh, I forget which state brought the lawsuit, but they want to be able to require these electors to vote for uh, uh, the candidate who wins the popular vote in the state, and the Supreme Court said yes, they can. Um, at, they, the states can require these electors to vote that way. So um, I guess that's a uh, you know fund uh, voter rights groups think this is a good um, outcome. So I guess this is one less bit of uncertainty in what is still possibly going to be a very uncertain uh, election scenario come November. I think all that is certain is that there will be a lot of uncertainty. Rick Newman, uh, thank you.